Hey, good morning, St. Hillary's. It's Adam, the new guy here. Hope you're well, and uh, I hope you're enjoying the fact that today uh, restrictions are eased. Uh, Mary's back at school, so that's really exciting for our household. And I just hope you're doing well. And uh, it's been a really weird experience for me to start here at St. Hillary's. Uh, not being able to meet many people in person and trying to make sense of um, who's who and what's going on. Uh, but it's just great to be able to uh, uh, to start and to really begin to get some things happening. So I'll be preaching this Sunday. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm looking forward to speaking to you about Ephesians 4. And as I read Ephesians 4, I thought, isn't this a great um, prayer almost, a great uh, desire for our community here at St. Hilary's and this next season that we're entering into together. Uh, when I was uh, a kid, one of the things that um, intrigued me was what it meant to be mature. You know, I would look at my parents, my grandparents, uh, my school teachers and other significant adults in my life. And I would think, I guess, being mature, being a grown up looks something like this. And I would try to uh, imitate them. Today's passage talks about um, this church that's coming together at Ephesus. There's, you know, uh, Jewish believers. There are Gentile believers. They're working out how to get along and be one church together. And so there's this emphasis on becoming spiritually mature. And I love that theme in here today. So let me read to you. Um, this is Paul writing to uh, the church at Ephesus, chapter 4, verse 1. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing uh, with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each one of us, grace has been given as Christ apportioned it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he also descended to the lower earthly regions? He who descended is the very one who ascended higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful schemes. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body joined and held together by every supporting ligament grows and builds itself up in love as each part does its work. So much in that passage and so little time to talk about it this morning. But um, three uh, big ideas in there that I wanted to draw out. Um, the first one is the unity of the spirit. It's emphasized with that, you know, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all, through all and in all. The first way that we find this, this sense of being mature in Christ, letting the Holy Spirit mature us is by seeking unity. Uh, and that's such an important thing, whether it's unity in our home, in our community, in our church, uh, and in our world. So unity, a really big theme. And um, then Paul emphasizes spiritual gifts or spiritual offices, and particularly the ones that are needed to build up the church. So he talks about um, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors and teachers, all who are involved in, um, in bringing together uh, the church, building it up, equipping the church. And uh, it's a great passion of mine to see the church equipped, not only so that we can have uh, the benefit of that, but that so we can look outward and be um, 
serving the world, serving the community uh, in the best ways uh, that we can. Uh, and in my short time here, I've already been sitting in meetings where I've been hearing about how that's happening and it's so encouraging. And thirdly and finally, we get to this whole spiritual maturity, uh, which is ultimately about attaining the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. If we want to know what it means to be mature, we need to look no further than Jesus and seek to live a life like his. And we're told that that happens not by being um, tossed by the various uh, things that are happening, but rather to speak the truth in love and seek love. Literally, those words are, you know, doing truth with love. Sometimes the truth can be hard to hear, but when it's given um, out of love and through love, uh, that actually um, helps to build us up and encourage us. And so as we uh, think about these things today, uh, my desire is that as a church, we would live in unity, that we would seek maturity and that we would keep growing and living in love together. So let me pray. Gracious Father, we thank you for this passage. We thank you for the way Paul wrote to this church to, uh, to encourage and build it up. And we pray that these words today would build us up as a church as we seek to uh, be your people in this place, in this time, serving you, loving you and reaching out so that more and more people may come to know you. We praise you, Lord Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen.